Almost four years ago, I released my very first countdown, my top 10 favorite Wii games, and I hate it! Oh my god, I cannot believe I made this atrocity, and it amazes me how I went from stuff like this to where I am today. One idea I've had on the back burner for some time now was to remake that list, but when I thought about it, I realized most of it would just be me repeating myself, so I decided to do something a bit different, talk about 10 more of my favorite Wii games. The Wii as a whole had some fantastic games to call its own, and since that list, I've played a bunch more. And this list won't be in any particular order because I don't want people to be confused about where each game will be placed in my rankings overall. My only rule is that I can't pick a game whose franchise was represented in my last list. With all that said, time to take a stroll down memory lane. Let's roll! One thing the Wii is most well known for is its great collection of party games. You got stuff like Mario Party, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympics, and a quirky little title called... Wii Party. Yeah, not the most creative of names, but this game makes up for that with how much fun it really is. At first glance, it may seem like Nintendo wanted to try and excel at what Hudson did with Mario Party, but that's not the case. There is one game that kind of feels like Mario Party, but that's about it. Even still, Board Game Island is a nice mode that's always my first pick when booting up the game. Alongside that, you have Globetrot, a game where players go all over the world to hotspots for special photos, and there's actually quite a bit of strategy and planning that goes into this. There's Spin-Off, which is basically a glorified game show, Swap Meet, that really puts your minigame skills to the test, and Bingo, which is just kinda there. Aside from these really fun party modes, there's also some cooperative games you can play to strengthen bonds instead of breaking them, and several house party games that can cause the biggest of laugh riots between friends. So while a bit unoriginal on the surface, dive into this gem, and you'll find a great party game to play with friends. Going from one party game to another, let's talk about Fortune Street. If you've ever played Monopoly, you'll get the basic idea here. You go around the board, buy properties, build them up, make negotiations, and try to make the most moolah first. But if that weren't, it wouldn't be all that interesting, would it? Helping you in your business endeavors is the stock market. By buying stocks in districts, you can earn more money when activity occurs in said district. So you can pull all your stocks into one district you're bent on building up to the max, or freeload off someone doing the same. The choice is yours, and I won't judge you. Much. On top of that, there's the Venture Cards, which can cause a variety of effects to occur, such as earning money, warping, or affecting shops on the board. Just hope you don't pull number 13. All these together make for a really fun and strategic party game that I'm sure anyone can enjoy. First you draw a circle, then you dot the eyes, add a great big smile, and you've heard all this before. When it comes to Kirby, the Pink Puffball knows how to land himself in some really great games, and the Wii is no exception because that system brought us Kirby Return to Dreamland. On the surface, this seems pretty typical for a Kirby game. Point A to B levels, fun copy abilities to use, secrets and collectibles aplenty, and an abundance of charm. Yeah, it might seem pretty safe, but is that really a bad thing? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Plus, this game has plenty to call its own. The co-op featured in this game is really fun to take advantage of. A second, third, or even fourth player can play as another Kirby, King Dedede, who's essentially Hammer Kirby, Meta Knight, a fugitive wing and sword, or Bandana Wild D, who's proficient in the art of the spear. On top of that, this game has an absolutely fantastic lineup of copy abilities. You got classics like Fire, Fighter, and Ninja, but there's also creative ones like Water and Leaf that add new layers to Kirby's moveset. Add in a fantastic OST, beautiful and varied environments, and fun boss fights to be had, and you have a Kirby game that's physically incapable of aging poorly. The last three games in this list have been whimsical, colorful adventures that just make you feel happy. So should I continue that trend? Well screw you! I wanna shoot things! When I want to blast apart anything that moves in a Nintendo game, I turn to the Metroid series, and the Wii certainly had an interesting game for the Space Bounty Hunter, Metroid Prime 3. As part of the Prime series, Corruption takes everything about Metroid and successfully integrates it with an additional Z-axis. Navigation, puzzle solving, getting upgrades, but most importantly, blasting everything that even THINKS about getting in your way! With the new pointer controls, you have much more freedom with movement and aiming, making the combat much more fun. Outside of the combat, the Wii Remote's motion controls are put to really creative use, for twisting mechanisms, calibrating panels, or ripping armor off enemies, which is still super satisfying to me. The way these actions translate basically one-to-one -to, -one to what Samus does in-game really makes you feel like you're in the shoes of the fearless bounty hunter. However, the way you progress isn't exactly done in typical Metroid fashion. Instead, Prime 3 takes a page out of Fusion's book and goes for a more linear mission-style adventure. I don't mind the change because it was handled just as well here as it was in Fusion. On top of that, exploring areas still nets you goodies, so there's still incentives to explore. And then there's the game's defining feature. Hyper Mode. While it does kind of neuter the difficulty, it's still so much fun to use. At this point, I can only hope Metroid Prime 4 will be just as good as this, if not better. If you've taken a look at my channel, you'll know I've done a blind let's play of a little game called Okami. This game came heavily recommended by my circle of friends, and I knew I had to get it. When I got around to playing it for my let's play, I was utterly captivated by its beauty. From its art style, to the characters, to the environment, and that majestic soundtrack, this game just exudes beauty. But this is no style over substance package, mind you. The game is structured not like a Zelda game, actually, but it adds its own spin on things. You go to a tainted land, restore its beauty bit by bit, find a source of darkness, take down the big bad, and repeat until credits. 
What makes this work though is how Amy handles. Being a wolf, she has some very nice acrobatics, and the brush techniques add a whole new layer of immersion to the game. From restoring broken structures, to slicing objects and enemies, to bending fire and water to your will, they're the perfect addition to the game. There aren't many games I can call art, but this game is certainly a masterpiece. And now for some mood whiplash. Every once in a while, I like to play a game that's more... unique. Several years ago, I saw a review for a game called Trauma Team by Frequency, go check them out by the way, and at the time, I was slightly curious but never got around to playing it. Well, that was mostly due to the fact I couldn't find the game at the time, but moving on. Eventually, I came to learn that Trauma Team was added to the Wii U's Virtual Console, and I immediately jumped on the opportunity to finally play it. Like I said, this game is very unique. You'll play as one of six doctors at a hospital, and each has their own gameplay style. You have surgery, where you have to extract tumors, find abnormalities, and repair internal damage. These sections are really fun and put your multitasking and dexterity to the test. Orthopedics has you help with bone trouble. You help repair broken bones, insert pins and nails, shave off edges, and even remove spinal tumors. While the control makes it fairly simple, your precision is being tested, and it's always fun challenging myself not to break the chain. First Response, my favorite of the bunch, has you control an EMT working to save victims of accidents and catastrophes. And let me tell you, keeping up with two to four or potentially five people who only help at once can get really stressful, but that's what I love about this mode. I always make it a point to never let anyone die, so I'm forced to plan out my actions, and it's so exhilarating. Diagnostics, thankfully, doesn't have any blood or injuries. Instead, here you're diagnosing health issues and diseases. While it's pretty basic, it's fun to just sit down and relax with this. Endoscopy has you controlling, well, an endoscope. You travel up a patient's body, removing abnormalities, treating internal bleeding, and more. While the control is a bit awkward, these can be fun in their own right, especially in the later stages. Finally, forensics has you solving mysteries. You'll examine corpses, locations, and interviews for clues, and ultimately figure out what caused the death. Before I think this has nothing to do with the game, it actually does tie in. These sections play a lot like Phoenix Wright, only I find these way more fun because they're much more involved. Plus, putting all the pieces together requires a great deal of logic and deductive reasoning. All these game modes offer something to set themselves apart, and it's all tied together by a surprisingly well-done story. I was pleasantly surprised how well thought out this plot was, and the characters were all memorable and likable, making me even more engaged. If you're ever in the mood for something different, maybe give this game a shot. You might be surprised just how great it is. First things first, gotta put up a disclaimer. If you're squeamish or don't like seeing blood and gore, skip ahead in the video to this time frame. I'll give you three seconds. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about Mad World. Most people associate the Wii with family-friendly games, so can someone please explain to me why one of the bloodiest and most violent games ever made is on the system? I'll take a thought, don't answer that because I don't care. This game is amazing! The action is completely over the top, and the art style really helps the game stick out, quite literally being black and white and red all over. Since you're encouraged to find the most creative ways to kill your unfortunate victims, you can really go all out with the options available. Want to impale them multiple times and throw them into either spikes or a dumpster? How about throwing them right in front of a train to get run over? Or maybe you're the kind of individual who gets pleasure out of killing a poor sap the old-fashioned way. You're completely sick, but have at it! As if that weren't enough, the bloodbath challenges within levels can be super addictive, and the soundtrack is a surprisingly fantastic selection of hip-hop tracks. While certainly out there for the system it's on, I'm so glad Mad World raced the Wii. Imagine this, you're stranded on an alien planet with nothing but your wits to survive, and you stumble across an odd alien species that wants to do everything in its power to help. With their help, you make it off the planet, but then your boss immediately sends you back to the planet because money. That right there is the premise behind Pikmin 2. I might be stretching it a bit because this wasn't originally a Wii game, but I never played it on the GameCube, so it gets away with the technicality. With that justification out of the way, HOLY COW THIS GAME IS SO MUCH FUN! While the first game was also really good and provided a fun challenge to try and beat the game as fast as possible, I like the second game more for a few reasons. First, with the addition of a second captain, you can get stuff done much more efficiently. You can have one captain send a group of Pikmin to bust down a wall, while the other scouts out the area goes exploring. It opens up the door for some fantastic multitasking, and I love that feeling. Second, I love the new Pikmin and how they're handled. Purple Pikmin being super strong nearly to the point of being broken, and White Pikmin providing interesting ways to hide treasures underground. Finally, I just like the more relaxed feel the game has overall. Since you're not on a time limit, you don't have to stress as much about getting everything possible as soon as possible, and can instead devote some time to other things like building up your numbers. The Pikmin series is certainly out of this world, and I can only hope it continues to impress us. Games today are fairly complex most of the time. You have the objective to reach that may or may not change multiple times, and a myriad of tools and options to help reach that objective. But what if I told you one of my favorite Wii games is also one of the simplest games imaginable? You'd probably agree with me because it's WarioWare Smooth Moves! As far as games go, the WarioWare series is the epitome of simple and effective. You're put into a micro game and have about 5 seconds to figure out what the heck you're supposed to do or else fail completely. But it's that very simplicity that has me going back to this game time and time again, whether it's by myself to try and beat my best records, or with friends and family by my side to compete. And I have to say, this is one of the most fun multiplayer experiences on the console. The simple nature of the microgames lends itself fantastically to these really well thought out game modes. Next time you're invited to a party, bring this game with you. You'll be treated as the guest of honor. 
As you've seen from this list, the Wii is home to some very special games. And to close this list, we need something that goes that one step further. I know what it is. You know what it is. That freaky guy sitting in the corner knows what it is. Xenoblade Chronicles. This one RPG encapsulates everything the genre is about and then some. You have this fantastically structured story that starts off fairly simple, but soon evolves in this juggernaut of a tale that makes you want to play more and more just to find out what happens next. Supporting the story is an amazing lineup of characters that each stick out in their own way. You got the heroic dumb band, the big oaf Ryan, the lovable Riki, and so many others. And tying them all together is Shulk, one of the most superbly written characters I've ever seen in a game, RPG or otherwise. The world you explore and the enemies you fight along the way are all rich and diverse, and the combat itself is so unique and fluid. You can build characters however you want, and you can pick and choose to control your favorites, giving an unreal amount of flexibility and build variety. Sure, this game has issues like occasional pacing problems, an overabundance of monotonous side quests, and some areas being far too large, but that's okay. I don't look for perfection in a game, I just look to have a good time. And Xenoblade Chronicles certainly delivers a good time. I'm Arrow Dragon, and the Wii's legacy shall never die. Well, it feels good to finally get this idea off the back burner into video form, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Unfortunately, this will be the last count on our release for some time because school's starting up again. But when winter break rolls around, you can expect a new LP, and, well, I'll reveal it when the time comes. Until next time, Zero Dragon, signing out.